your dead relatives are not coming back to have conversations with you right. and hang out. So if something is communicating with you from a biblical perspective, some entity from the other side is communicating, it's not something that you want to hear. I mean, even, even like you have the pre-incarnate Christ mm -hmm. appearing in the Old Testament. You've got it with Moses. You've got it with Joshua. You've got it, uh, you've got, you've got it in instances over and over and over again, even a seance situation where something shows up that wasn't what was planned kind of a thing. Um, you've got in the New Testament itself, you've got the spiritual breaching the physical. You've got Moses and Elijah appearing on, at the transfiguration and, uh, at the mountaintop with the Lord Jesus to the degree that it freaks out Peter and he's you know, that, but that's a real breach of the physical with the spiritual. The supernatural is now uh, amongst the natural. You've got instances where Jesus has interaction with uh, supernatural beings in his mm -hmm. ministry. You've got after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, the book of Acts, we mentioned that in the last episode, you've got the, the supernatural communicating in the realm of the natural. So the, <clears throat> the biblical worldview isn't a biblical worldview that is only the material, and then sort of like when this is dead, you go somewhere else out there. Like it, there's a there's a connection between the spiritual and the natural in the biblical worldview. Now, of course, sin has um, obscured a lot of that and made that very difficult. Um, but the point is, is both Old and New Testament, you've got the spiritual and physical interacting constantly. The angelic beings are Old and New Testament communicating. In, uh, into the physical and natural. So my point is, is that it makes sense from a Christian perspective. It's not weird and foreign and like, what do you mean you're speaking to an entity from another dimension? It's like, it's not strange. Mm -hmm. Like it's not normative. Let's get that clear. Mm -hmm. It's not normative that that occurs, but it's not strange and out of, and, and out of the possibility of, of things that can happen in this world. It happens throughout our Bible. So when someone comes to me and says, hey, I had a real experience when I spoke to something from the other side, I go, well, let's investigate if that was really true. And maybe it is true. Maybe you did. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that if you did, stop it. Yeah, yeah. stop. Uh, like, <laughs> stop it. Can I say that? Like, <laughs> yes. Uh, and if you did, find a way to stop immediately. <laughs> like, uh, that's not healthy and you're not supposed to be doing that. And the Bible never, ever, ever encourages that. And, and I'll give you just the last thing I'll say here is when Jesus gives this one story of a rich man and Lazarus, he talks about, uh, you know, the rich man going into a place of torment yeah. and Lazarus being in Abraham's bosom at the time, right? And so he's in paradise and bliss and everything else and you've got the rich man in torment he's freaking out it's like go back and tell my relatives someone send back my tell my relatives like this place really exists like they don't want to come here and what does the angel communicate to him while he's in torment like there's a gulf fix between you and them so no one's going back like to to, to cross over and talk back from you to them um and the point i'm making there is that there aren't any old dead relatives coming back to talk to you right mm -hmm. Right. Like, let that hang for a second. Your dead relatives are not coming back to have conversations with you right. and hang out. So if something is communicating with you from a biblical perspective, some entity from the other side is communicating, it's not something that you want to hear. Right. Right? It's not something that you want to sort of be hooked up in. It's not something you want to hear from. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. And so the danger there is when people start opening themselves up to accepting communication with the other side. Oh, and by the way, God says, don't you dare try mm -hmm. to seek that kind of communication, necromancy, communication with the dead, sorcery, trying to cross over that realm to communicate because they're not coming back to talk to you. Um, and, and somebody could say, well, what about instances where like you have Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus? Those weren't demons. <laughs> right. And I would say, right. So there's an amazing moment in redemptive history where God gives this shocking revelation of who Jesus is. And there's the two representatives of the old covenant, the law and the prophets, Moses and Elijah, under the authority of God that are confirming to disciples, this is the one, pay it, listen to him. So there's no communication with like these dead people where it's this private yeah. revelation. It's like you and I are buddies and let's hang out. It's always like Jesus, 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 him. This is what it's all about. It's about him. But even that's a unique situation. That's a privileged situation. It's not something where dead relatives from Hades are coming back to say, right. hey, don't follow me where I went kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah, and well, so, narr narrative is not the normative. That's yeah, what people need to that, realize and in that's a lot the, of these instances. That's important. But what do you see? The demonic. Mm -hmm. communicating 
because mm-hmm. yeah. the demonic are around yeah and the demonic we're not at the end of time where death and hades are cast into the lake of fire we're not at the time of the resurrection yet that comes after christ puts all enemies under his feet so there is the presence of the enemy around us and you do see instances in old and new testament where the enemy does try to influence and infiltrate people's lives and that's why it's dangerous 